Hey, good morning, y'all. Josh's severe weather. Hope you had a wonderful Tuesday. And here we go. The Ides of March, Wednesday, smack dab in the middle of March and some more crazy weather to talk about. One storm leaving New England and Atlantic Canada, another big storm out west getting ready to take charge and move right across the eastern and central parts of the country here over the next few days. And the storm track looks like it's going to stay active next week. So uh, believe it or not, you're going to be seeing your share of videos from me talking about snow, talking about severe weather, talking about wind, rain. Um, even though we're heading towards uh, astronomical spring here next week, there will still be winter to talk about. Uh, for those of you in the south, you know exactly what to expect this time of the year with heavy rain, flooding, severe weather, tornadoes. And we've got a lot of that on the menu as well. So let's get right to it here. I'm going to share my screen and show you what's on the map with our next big storm that has smashed California with heavy rain Tuesday and Tuesday night. Still some flooding going on in Southern Cal as we speak. Uh, but that storm is going to organize into a big snowmaker here in the Rockies. And it's going to kind of skip past Denver and hit just the foothills today. Uh, but as it moves on to the high plains tonight into tomorrow, we will begin to look at uh, accumulating snow, maybe a bit of sleet across parts of Nebraska, northern Kansas into the eastern Dakotas, and then a major snowstorm once again for northeastern Minnesota, the Arrowhead. Um, I think I was seeing somewhere that a roof collapsed at part of a mall in Duluth. Well, you've got a lot more snow on top of it, so I hope you get your roof fixed up there. Um, and very heavy snow as we head towards Lake Superior into northern Ontario and into western Quebec. And this storm, as it deepens, is going to produce a lot of wind. And again, power outages are going to be a possibility here in the Great Lakes, especially as well as the uh, northern plains and eventually into the northeast as we get to the very end of this week into the start of the weekend. Now, there is a severe part of this um, outbreak that we're looking at, or I should say a severe weather outbreak part of the storm that we're looking at potentially here starting tomorrow around midday into the afternoon in the Dallas Fort Worth Red River Valley area. And that expands south and eastward across most of central and east Texas, southern Oklahoma, southwestern Arkansas, and eventually getting down into Louisiana late tomorrow night into the day on Friday morning. And the central Gulf Coast still has a chance for some severe weather Friday afternoon. As warmer air moves in off the Gulf, stronger winds aloft move in and ingredients increase for some severe weather. It is not warm right now in the east, I will tell you that. Uh, I think I'm in the upper 20s here this morning in Raleigh, dew points in the teens, but we are going to see a massive flip coming. Uh, one more cold night tonight, then temperatures start to rebound pretty quickly. And the put back here on Friday to beat the buzzer with very warm temperatures into the 70s and 80s in the southeast, 60s up the eastern seaboard. And uh, even 40s and 50s will help some of this snow melt pretty quickly here across the interior of the northeast before our next shot of cold gets in here over the weekend. All right, so let's look at snow totals. And a lot of places did get hit really hard, but this storm was the haves and the have nots. Uh, with some places in the Catskills and in the Green Mountains picking up up to three feet of snow. Um, we're seeing amounts of 20 inches plus in Shaftesbury. Uh, Marlboro or Marlboro got 32 inches um, and there were 35 inches in Reedsboro. And I think the big winner here um, for what I could tell was Coleraine, Massachusetts here. Uh, around Christian Hill, we saw up to three feet of snow. And parts of the Worcester Hills did really well as well. But as you get farther east, some places did not get much around the Boston area. And this was never an easy forecast in Boston, I am going to say that. But the fact that it rained most of the morning and early afternoon before that change to snow uh, really only gave us some heavy, wet snow, especially north and west of the city. New York City, you have every right to feel like you got ripped off once again. It snowed a lot during the afternoon and nothing really stuck to the ground. I was watching a webcam uh, from uh, from Fordham University up in the Bronx where it looked beautiful, but nothing really stuck. You had to get into the higher elevation. So while this was a historic storm for elevations in the northeast, a higher terrain, uh, it was a massive dud for the coastal uh, portion. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I, there's not much we can say about it other than just got to move on and pray there'll still be a chance for a big snowfall. But it is mid-March, so really at this point, I'm thinking most people are looking forward to warmer weather. And even though uh, we are paying for what we got in January and February, um, it, it is start. It, it, you get to a point where it's time to move on. Let's just say that. So um, sadly, we did have... Um, I'm going to look at the report here somewhere in the Lowell area. Uh, and it was mainly due to winds and but also high snow. Let me see if I can zoom in here and show you guys. 
Um, you may have heard this on the news. Where was it? Maybe that report hasn't trickled in yet. Uh, but that there was um, a roof collapse on one of the farms out here that killed a bunch of cattle. So difficult situation to say the least. Here are the storm reports. You can see again where there's higher elevation, there were high amounts of snow where the elevations were lower in the valleys, lower amounts. There was one report here of 43 inches in Beacon, which is on the Hudson River. And what I'm gonna say is shame on that person for putting that in because there was no way they got more than a foot of snow. They're on a two hour delay this morning. Um, so I don't think anybody got more than 40 inches out of this, but 36 inches seems to be kind of the ceiling, and that is a historic storm. You don't get that too often here. There's usually some sort of mixing, whether it be ice or rain or whatever, uh, that gets into these really big northeast storms. But when you have a coastal low that sits and spins and throws that snow back, then that's where you get these massive amounts of snow. And we saw that big storm as well back in December 2020. The amounts were higher back here in central New York and northeast PA, but that was a historic storm. This also was, but with that storm, a lot of places didn't get much and a lot got a lot. So again, elevation comes into play. And in Massachusetts, um, when you get into Middlesex County, you go from three to four inches closer to the city of Boston, all the way up to about 25, 26 inches in the northwest corner uh, in the higher elevations near the New Hampshire border. So. Uh, if you're putting out a forecast for the biggest county in Massachusetts, what do you do? Go three to 30 inches? Well, that would verify in this certain situation. So uh, even you get to like a in Worcester, I think it's Worcester County, Worcester County, um, you get to an area where 10 miles gave you a, a 20 inch difference in snow. So anyway, here's our upper level low curling off the coast. It will move eastward and affect Nova Scotia and PEI today. Uh, but largely our storm is winding down just some leftover up glide here producing some lighter amounts of snow this morning the next storm you can see on the map it's a huge trough carving its way into the northwest lots of moisture coming in from our atmospheric river over southern cal and that is going to send moisture eastward across the rockies today and then onto the plains tonight and tomorrow there's a weakness down here over the central gulf coast states where it's cooler and cloudier we've had some sprinkles yesterday and cool temperatures that's going to send cloud cover across florida but not a big weather maker this thing is pretty minor compared to the two big eyes staring it down the one over the new england coast and the bigger eye that is moving into the northwest sorry i like to draw pictures so big eye big eye tiny little nose so here's our jet stream uh, on the nam you can see big trough moving out of florida here big upper low beginning to move out next storm plowing into the central part of the country tomorrow and we see a strong jet streak moving into Texas by the afternoon. That's going to help fuel some more intense storms into the afternoon and evening hours uh, in the um, exit. I believe it's the uh, entrance, right, the right entrance region of this jet is where the severe weather is favored as faster winds move on to the Red River area. And into the nighttime, that expands north and east uh, across the Ohio Valley. That's going to crank the wind up for us and move our storm along pretty quickly and on the uh, left uh, entrance part we're going to see heavy amounts of snow and especially the left exit region here as this upper low cuts in friday is going to be a pretty snowy day here across ontario and the lakes the northern lakes not the southern lakes um, as our jet stream moves into the eastern part of the country but this is a warmer flow it brings warm air up the eastern seaboard on friday followed by this upper low which intensifies our storm and brings back the return of wintry temperatures here for the weekend um, in the southeast, we do have some potential for severe weather along the Gulf Coast. It's going to be a little bit more limited in that our jet stream is moving away and the amount of instability is going to be somewhat meager, but there will be that possibility of seeing some severe weather. Now, this map looks a lot worse than it is. This is a freeze warning. Uh, the growing season has started. We're seeing freezing temperatures this morning and again tonight in the Carolinas of the southeast. Winter storm advisories and warnings will be wrapping up here. Here's our next one, winter storm watch from northeast Nebraska right up through Lake Superior. And that'll continue, I'm sure, uh, from the uh, Canadian Meteorological Service here over the Ontario portion and probably into Quebec. <clears throat> and we have a lot of heavy snow with winter storm warnings across the Rocky Mountains from New Mexico and Utah and up into Idaho and Montana. Flash flood watch continues over the Valley of California as well as Orange County and into San Bernardino County here in California. Also around the rim country into Nevada, we do have a flash flood watch. And there are some wind advisories as well east of the Rockies in Wyoming, as well as the Trans-Pecos region of Texas and into the high plains here 
uh, from Kansas into northeastern New Mexico with higher winds expected. And I do expect we'll see wind advisories in here before the end of the week, including Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, and Indianapolis as winds are forecast to crank up. Here's our storm leaving Canada. And uh, 48 hour snowfall totals generally 10 to 20 centimeters over central and eastern Nova Scotia, uh, 5 to 10 over Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick seeing fewer amounts, most of that snow winding down now. And Newfoundland also uh, will be looking at the potential for 10 to 20 centimeters of fresh snow uh, with the highest amounts over the so southwestern portion of Newfoundland. Uh, I say that because I have some friends in Canada that are following, and thank you all so much for joining us here. Um, hope you guys are enjoying an exciting hockey season. All right, so here is the European model. Here's our storm moving into the Rockies in southwest today and tonight. This is around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock tonight, and heavy snow over the Four Corners region and the elevations. You can see our low-pressure system gathering isobars off the Gulf. It'll be turning windier and milder here in the Southern Plains today. Um, colder air, this is a big high pressure zone pushing down east of the Rockies, bleeding colder air down. With this warmer air riding up and over it, we'll see heavier snow and some sleet uh, forming over north central parts of Nebraska and southeastern parts of um, South Dakota. Now tomorrow morning, we see this front already moving through Omaha, so rain in the morning changes to snow. Des Moines will see a changeover towards the end of the day, but most of that heavy snow moves up through the Twin Cities, according to the Euro. And it gets heavier as we get up north and east of Minneapolis into northwestern Wisconsin and the arrowhead of Minnesota. Upper Michigan sees heavy snow as well moving in here uh, late in the afternoon tomorrow and especially tomorrow night. And now we've got strong upper low. This is a piece of the polar vortex dropping into North Dakota on Friday and low pressure sending warm air up the east coast to this boundary that's set up here over northern New York and central New England. South of the boundary, <clears throat> we have wind, we have mild temperatures, and we have rain showers throughout the day. Towards the Gulf Coast, we have thunderstorms involved as well. But uh, east of that area, it's going to be a pretty decent day to be outside across the Florida Peninsula, right on up into the mid-Atlantic states. So as cold as it is now, we bounce back and it starts feeling more like early April, all the way up into Philadelphia and South Jersey on Friday. But right behind it, it gets colder. So as this storm cranks up, even though we're not talking a big snow for the Northeast, Due to the fact that our low is too far north, we do have colder air blasting right back down to the Gulf Coast states into the east. And that could set up another southern storm track here that could bring snow into West Texas here over the weekend. And um, by the time it moves east, it's going to hit drier air, but we could have another storm gathering strength over the Gulf states Monday and Tuesday coming up the east coast. But Still too soon to say if that's going to be a mid-Atlantic storm, a northeast storm, or a southeaster. At this point, um, any of those options is on the table, but something we'll be watching here. Uh, the GFS model tries to bring this storm out of the Gulf Coast and up through Florida, <clears throat> and it's doing some weird stuff here across the Atlanta area and upstate South Carolina and western North Carolina, showing some snow, but the models have not been consistent enough on where that snow shows up. It may be just elevational. Uh, it could be over the Piedmont, or it could just be little to nothing, and we have low pressure tracking up like it has for pretty much the remainder of the winter here. Here's the NAM showing very heavy snow across the northern tier of the country. We're looking at amounts as high as three feet, potentially over northern parts of Ontario, two to three feet over the Rocky Mountains. I'm going to show you more detail here in just a second. Here's what the NAM does. It takes our storm system right on through central Nebraska. Notice how the front is already ahead of this. So this is a lot, a lot of the storm is behind the front uh, tomorrow morning. But then as we get into the afternoon, we'll see some supercell storms popping up over central and east Texas, and then a line of more organized storms dropping south and east at night. So kind of two waves of potential severe weather, one across east Texas, the next one coming down through the Red River Valley in the evening and moving across Louisiana and Arkansas. This will produce widespread strong winds with it. I'm going to talk about that in more detail here. First, let's look at the snow in more detail. And you can see the potential for 6 to 12 inches starts in central Minnesota and increases as we get into the Lake Superior region where we could see as much as two feet of snow. Um, so a big snowstorm expected here Friday night, possibly blizzard conditions as well uh, in places like Marathon, Thunder Bay, uh, the Keweenaw Peninsula, or yeah, Keweenaw Peninsula could see blizzard conditions, even Marquette, Michigan, uh, as we get later into Friday night into Saturday morning. So a nasty storm nonetheless. Here we go. We see later today snow across the Salt Lake City region into western Colorado, rain over the lower elevations. 
That will expand into the Dakotas and Nebraska tonight. And we see uh, precipitation enhancing behind our front where we could have some icy conditions into South Dakota and northeastern Nebraska before daybreak tomorrow. Now we see across parts of the southern plains a few thunderstorms trying to pop up here uh, around lunchtime. And you can see those over northeast Texas and east central Texas right around the Brazos River Valley here in the afternoon while it will be snowing in, in the northern panhandle of Texas. But here uh, we have two distinct regions of potential severe weather, one in northeast Texas moving into Arkansas and Louisiana. Number two is a more organized line with our cold front dropping down through the metroplex around eight o'clock in the evening, southeast Oklahoma, and then expanding down into northwest Louisiana and hitting Shreveport around midnight to 1 a.m. and then beginning to lose some punch by the time it gets into southeast Texas towards daybreak on Friday. There could still be some stronger storms in southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi early in the day on Friday. That will expand eastward into Florida after that. There's now an enhanced risk for severe weather, which includes a 5% area of tornadoes across the Arklatex region, central and east Texas, 2% down to San Antonio and Houston and east to Alexandria and up to Little Rock, uh, a 30% chance of severe wind in areas that got hit two weeks ago in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to, uh, to uh, Texarkana, 15% chance down to Houston, San Antonio, Austin, and even the Hill Country. And uh, we could see initially some very intense hail in the Dallas-Fort Worth area up to McKinney and north and west, uh, including Sherman, all the way close to Wichita Falls and up into the Ardmore area of Oklahoma. And that's going to be in the afternoon, followed by the tornado threat later towards the evening hours, it looks like. And as we look closer here at the supercell composite index, you can see why. Now here is about 4 o'clock central. Uh, and we see the threat for some supercells here in East Texas. Southern part of this area, I don't think sees them. Yeah, it's it's definitely unstable, but really it's this area north and west of Fort Worth that has the biggest threat of seeing massive hail. And as we get into the nighttime hours, we have to worry more about strong winds and potential tornadoes across this portion of East Texas here in the evening, then sneaking into Louisiana and Southeast Texas later Thursday night under the co cover of darkness. Here's our significant tornado parameter starts ramping up here in the afternoon hours, um, especially up here to the north and west of McKinney, Texas, uh, around five o'clock. So right as people are trying to leave work, we will likely see um, supercell storms in here, perhaps some tornadoes, certainly the threat for strong winds and hail that moves south and east through Dallas and continues and then weakens some as it gets into Louisiana and then may try to pick back up around New Orleans and Mobile as we get into the middle of the day on Friday. Zooming in closer to Texas, you can see here's the area pinpointed to see the most intense weather right over the Red River Valley here around five, six o'clock, and then expanding through the Dallas-Fort Worth area into Northeast Texas here later in the evening, and then into Louisiana. And I'll show you that. Um, this is updraft helicity showing the best chance for rotating storms and maybe tornadoes. And there is a bullseye right over Shreveport, Bossier City here uh, late in the evening. So right around midnight, don't be shocked if we have tornado warnings sounding in northwestern Louisiana. And that continues down into the Cushada region and into Alexandria late at night and to a lesser extent over southern Louisiana here during the first half of the day Friday. By then, I think we're just looking at locally strong winds. I mean, if you look at the Cape and that is the amount of available potential energy it is definitely not super high here over East Texas. Really, it's Southeast Texas that sees the highest Cape. But as we get into Friday morning, it's a lot more meager, but it is high enough for some severe weather around New Orleans and Homa and Thibodeau and all the way down to Southern Lafouche Parish. We may have some severe weather early in the day Friday, and then that expands eastward. And let me show you all um, Alabama here, especially South Alabama does expand into the uh, panhandle of Florida and southern Alabama and southeast Mississippi into the early afternoon hour. So something I'll be watching for you all. Here's our snow map farther east in inches. Uh, you can see maybe up to 30 inches in parts of Ontario. I'll show you centimeters so that makes you feel better here. 70 to 75 centimeters of potential snow falling uh, across northeastern parts of Ontario. When you get down to Sault Ste. Marie, that, those amounts drop quite a bit down into the 30s, but still a pretty significant storm. And uh, spreading eastward here, let me give you Canada, into eastern Canada. Um, oops, let's look at Ontario. 
Uh, you can see we'll still have potential amounts through Saturday morning over 40 centimeters across northwestern parts of Quebec and lesser amounts when you get down to the St. Lawrence Valley. All right, so here's the eastern U.S. and I'll show you really quickly here our front moves through Chicago uh, late Thursday evening. It'll bring some gusty winds and some rain with it. Rain to Detroit to southern Ontario, including Hamilton, Toronto. I don't think we're going to see really any snow. Uh, we're just looking at an area of rain moving through Georgia into the Carolinas Friday night. Uh, it may sneak up to Charlotte before day or before dark. Uh, you're probably okay at the end of the day in Raleigh, but raining at night. And as that cold air rushes in behind the front, we do see the possibility of some wet snow uh, moving into places like Tazewell County and then up towards Beckley, West Virginia. Could see a couple of inches of wet snow as it'll now be dark and temperatures are going to be crashing. Uh, watch for roads to get kind of icy in here, especially those higher elevations. Uh, maybe even uh, I-81, something we'll have to keep an eye on, but more likely 77, and that's going to be Friday evening, and then this snow winds down in time for daybreak. The GFS tries to bring a little bit of wet snow into the I-95 corridor uh, from the district on north and east to New York City. The way this winter has gone, I'm not promising you guys any accumulation. Uh, at this point, it may just be a small burst of some wet snowflakes. Uh, but something to keep an eye on as temperatures do drop quickly here at daybreak on Saturday morning as roads could be locally icy, mainly those secondary roads and bridges. Uh, but this is primarily wet snow and not a big deal at this point. Um, I don't think we'll see winter weather advisories at this point. Uh, but if this low pressure does form a little bit closer uh, to the Jersey Shore and there's enough moisture left over, then maybe this forecast changes. Right now, it doesn't look like it's the case. You're just looking at a cold weekend with snow belt snow expected here as this trough swings through the eastern United States. Uh, here are temperature anomalies. You can see how quickly it warms up here on Friday in the east and then gets so much colder again over the southeast and deep south Texas over the weekend and early next week. With chilly air continuing to stick into the eastern United States right on through the end of the week, then we warm right back up above average over the Great Lakes late next week. So. This favors storm tracks out to sea and then moving up through the eastern lakes, uh, which is not what you want to see if you want to see winter weather. Temperatures are cold this morning. We're having 20s across parts of the southeast, 30s down to the Gulf Coast states. Uh, it'll start warming up today in Louisiana and on the Gulf Coast, but still a chilly day all the way down in the central Florida where we're only in the low to mid 60s. Um, as we get into tomorrow, though, uh, after a chilly start, we do warm up more rapidly in the afternoon and 60s return into the York and uh, Harrisburg areas of Pennsylvania, 70s up into parts of the Mid-South, 60s in the Tennessee Valley, even 50s in Ohio. Uh, Chicago should be well into the 40s, but here's your temperature contrast in Missouri. Uh, we're looking at upper 50s in the boot heel at the end of the day and dropping into the 20s north and west of St. Joe in the evening. Um, and then Friday, here comes our front. We're dropping very rapidly here in the morning. Uh, from the 70s in southeastern Louisiana into the 40s at night. Farther up the East Coast, 60s possible around Philly. Remember, I showed you those wet snowflakes later at night. That will happen with temperatures in the upper 30s to maybe 40 degrees. So again, not a huge deal. The big deal is just going to be potentially running the air conditioning here in the afternoon in North Carolina on Friday to running the heat during the morning on Saturday. Nothing un unusual for March at this point. And it stays chilly into next week, and we're going to keep an eye on our storm track over the southeast. Thank you all so much for your time. God bless you. I really appreciate you joining me. I am running a fundraiser to benefit childhood cancer research through the St. Baldrick's Foundation. Typically, men who do that shave their heads. I'm just going to shave my beard here. That'll be on Saturday. You get to see babyface Josh here on the weekend. Uh, but if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm going to break down more of that severe threat here tomorrow, more of the snow threat up north. And we're going to take more of a closer look at the following storm in the southeast here early next week here. That's the 21st, 22nd of March. Uh, so I appreciate you if you do subscribe to my channel. That very much helps me out. Um, it helps build this audience. It also allows you to see the latest content that I'm going to post in between videos throughout the day. Um, also, um, you know, even though it helps me, really, I feel like I'm called to do this to give all the glory to God. He allows me to do what I can uh, through this video, and that is to serve the greater kingdom by sharing my faith and by sharing um, the, the potential of saving lives through these videos, the potential to get important information out about weather so that that word can be spread. Um, without God, I can't do what I can do. Uh, he created me to be a meteorologist, 
And he created me to perform works through this gift, through my through Romans 828, allowing me to serve this way. And I'm going to read a quick verse from James 226. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Now, I'm going to repeat that part. Faith without works is dead. How many of you all seriously believe that something great is there for you? Now, how many people actually work towards the goal, work towards eternity, work towards um, sharing their faith with others, work towards serving the greater good versus just serving themselves and and falling into temptations? And I, I just want to say, let's just say you've got a you've been offered a job and you believe that you'll be paid timely. Now, what's going to happen if you don't show up to work? Well, you're not doing those good works. You're not going to get paid. So if you truly, truly want to believe that you'll be rewarded, then you need to do the works. You need to put in the work. You need to put in the sweat equity. And when I do my videos here, I do spend quite a bit of time in studying the weather. I can't get it right everywhere. I show you a lot of models that end up being wrong. Um, but as a meteorologist, I can try to start figuring out where those are going wrong and share what I can with you. But I can't do that without going to the Lord in prayer every day and thanking him for just allowing me to do what I can and keeping me healthy. I know there's some of you that have had prayer requests. Um, I am praying for you. Um, I saw a good one come through yesterday morning, um, and I realize you're going through a difficult situation. I'm happy to pray for you. Uh, but please, um, you know, let's let's help your faith by praying. Let's do those works. Let's talk to God and acknowledge him and allow him to work in us because we so believe. So I'm happy to pray for you, uh, spoken or unspoken. And if you could pray for me as well, that'd be great. Um, everybody sharing our faith, in my opinion, is what gets us um, to, to restoring not just faith in humanity, but faith in God. And that's what, it, that's what matters the most to me. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, please be safe out there and stay warm. We'll talk again in the morning. Have a blessed day. See you then.